And welcome back. It is final table time here at the 2023 Trans Our ship leader with 12 million. Please welcome Manuel Sap. Wow, is the second Stormer going to take down another Triton title? And everybody right up here, front and center. Nice big smiles, everyone. Coming in as a chip leader, which is always very, very nice, of course. And first hand, I remember on the cutoff, got dealt 8 9 offsuit and decided to open race this one. And I guess from that point on, I was very confident that I'm, I can just forget about the money that we're playing for, that I just play. If I think a spot is plus EV, I'm gonna take it. And that's basically how I think I played the entire final table. Seeing Manuel sit there, all the chips, and then also just, he had a nice distribution of cards at the final table and it held in spots. He also faced a lot of resistance. We are running pure, winning every flip, holding every 70-30, getting in kings versus queens. Every time I don't have it, they fold. That's how you run deep in tournaments. <laughs> all in. Playing tournaments for now 15 years, of course, ICM is quite a big thing, but I think I'm fairly trained, even though I will probably be the one with the least knowledge about ICM on that final table. But still, uh, I did factor it in, but I didn't factor it in with the sums of money. I rather factored it in with a percentage of the prize pool. So I wasn't thinking about, oh my, oh my God, like we have locked 200K, holy shit, like those thoughts. Uh, are, are not allowed. I didn't allow them to have them call. Good game, mate. Want to look at anything or Lucas wants to play? <laughs> sure. Can we? Can we take a break? And like a ten minute break, and get the chip we counts. Up some of yeah. The white chips too. Yeah. I'll, I'll be up for that if it's possible. Yeah. You wanna ACR sat? Yeah, yeah. Oh, sick. So yeah, yeah, this is the ultimate like spin up. <laughs> yeah, it's sick. So yeah, you might have like a two to three percent. Uh, I don't know yeah, what, yeah. what whatever you edge is, but like. What's the difference? What are we playing for? Like three hundred k? Yeah, a little bit less, yeah. Yeah. You make it be mine, be talking to him? Yeah, yeah, let me, let me think about it. All right. Uh, yeah, ask him if he wants to look at numbers. Okay. He's going to make up his mind. I don't want him to move, I can't fucking find it. Yeah, who the fuck is this kid? I think it's his first time playing it. <laughs> like, I, I can't fucking lose it all in. Like, how the fuck is that possible? I mean, I know, I know how it's the other way around, but no, it's, it's good. Here. Good luck, mate. The heads up started with a uh, chip lead for me. I think we were still playing 50 big blinds effectively deep, so I expected it to take quite some time. Uh, got my first bluff through on the first hand where I check raised the flop and double barreled a fairly good turn for my range when I just had 10 high and obviously that gave me some confidence. Um, heads up is very tricky for an MTT player because that's the part we are not used to unless we play fairly small fields, which I know I don't and which I guess uh, Lucas Greenwood doesn't either. So um, of course he's good enough to know what he's doing, but I still didn't play heads up against uh, heads up cash game sicko. I played heads up against an MTT player. So therefore I knew I was underdog from the skill, but I had more chips and I still know what I'm doing, kind of. <laughs> so I was fairly confident. Well, it's been an epic two-hour heads-up battle so far. Fantastic way 
to kick things off for us here at the Triton Super High Roller Series in London. Yeah, this is the lowest I think either of the players have been. I, I know first time we've seen someone sub 10 battle of the 9x. Green we're gonna knuckle one over 1.8 in the middle it feels like every pot could be the last hand Randy. Nine hundred. Zap starts building the pot. Two point five. Three. takes it north. Feels like the money's going to go in here, whether it be on the flop or on the turn. Call. Looks like he's calling, but he's no intention of folding. knows he's never folding cards on their backs so Randy the five kicker plays in this 16 all right I'll take a deuce it's okay oh, that's sick that the kicker plays holy yeah, shit <laughs> two monsters <laughs> The nine on the river, the biggest needle the dealer could have dealt. Good game, man. Congrats. Yeah, it was a fun one. It was a fun one. First one thought was not, oh my god, I lost the heads up. The first thought was, wow, $600,000. Well, well deserved, well deserved. Well done, man. That was when you first came in. Congratulations, Joey. Come on, so good, come on. Mega. So good, you I'm out of the tunnel now, finally. Uh, <laughs> I was in that fucking tunnel for so long. Uh, go to the bar. Let's, Let's go, go to, to the, the bar. bar. <laughs> I think that's it. <laughs> After realizing what has happened to me, immediately I feel that it is my job as a family dad to really use this chance. This chance has been given to me and I'm so, so thankful for this. But with this score that I had, if I mess it up <laughs> after this chance that has been given to me, um, I just simply can't. So right now my focus immediately is on the future. Oh, nice to meet you. Hey. Nice to meet you. <laughs> I wish everybody I met worked out like this. <laughs> I might be drunk when I come home. <laughs> I'll, I'll explain everything later, I love you. I'm just as proud of him as you are. I'm just as proud of him as you are. <laughs> Make sure he gets drunk. Yeah, That's what I she said. I've got one to get you the man. Hey, hey, Chris, can you teach this guy to win first instead of second? Second's really good. <laughs> Go ahead, try it again. Second, second. second. <laughs> Congratulate this gentleman. Mr. Moneymaker. Thank you so much. How are you feeling? I don't know. It, it's, I, it hasn't arrived, really. It'll arrive soon, don't worry. My butt sweats all the time, and I get little butt sweats lying coming on the thing. Are you guys famous? Are you guys famous? Thanks, honey. I'm clunking. I'm scared, I'm scared and nervous. <laughs> I was so excited to play more. Couldn't wait for the 40K mystery bounty. Yeah, I obviously know coming into this that these guys are way out of my league uh, when it comes to the game of poker. <laughs> um, so my main goal coming here was ultimately to, to have some fun, um, to bring some laughs to the table and to represent ACR um, to the best of my ability. I knew that my forte wasn't going to come here and be like, wow, that's ACR Crusher John Party beating up all these high stakes pros. I definitely had a mindset coming in to just, just have fun, um, try to enjoy every moment of this experience, have some laughs, and everything on top of that was just gravy on the taters. I'm going to three bet Charlie Carroll 96 times today. I hope he never heard me. <laughs> <laughs> Long term, probably good fool. <laughs> what was with your seven? 
Yeah, if, the, if there's more getting there, then I would just be able to like walk in. Yeah, like maybe within 45 minutes. Yeah, Jack free suited. <laughs> no, not not quite. GG. <laughs> Take care, man. Was a thousand? Base 90. Sad, what do I do now? I can. That's fun. Cheers. I feel so fucking bad for busting through. <laughs> oh, he trapped the fuck out of me, and then I got lucky on the river. Feels bad, man. Well, oh, feels good, man, but feels bad for the guy, man. Yeah. Feels bad than indeed. Yeah. Um, oh, well. It is. I was gonna play the 30k bounty but i am a mystery bounty junkie so after i busted my first bullet and hannah too was was we were talking i was like i don't know honey what do you think she's like i think you should play the mystery bounty again so i'm like dang she's probably right she's just right too much it's so annoying <laughs> uh i was like okay i i, I feel good I i'm recharged i'm re-energized get back into the mystery bounty oh Gosh, I get into such a sick hand for a big stack. There is a raise in middle position, active opener, and then there is a flat in the small blind. Small blind range, very condensed in, in this moment, especially on their stack. He had just like gotten lucky, doubled up, and he had maybe 25-ish blinds. I had about 20-ish blinds in the big blind. I looked down at pocket jacks. Considering my image, how I think about these elite players perceiving what I'm doing, I decide to jam with my jacks, 20-ish bigs. He slightly covers me, right? All in. All in. I jam, and he goes, because the jam looked big for how these Triton tournaments play. Calls, though. He just has a hand he can't fold. Pocket nines. I have jacks. I'm like, this is amazing. This is fantastic. He flops a nine. I end up losing. And that was actually, I think, a very important moment. I feel like that's some like necessary pain to feel, right? If I'm gonna get the full Triton high roller experience, you have to get sucked out on. You have to know what it feels like. My time. I understand the spectrum, I feel like now, of emotions. Oh, that was massive, dude. That was so massive. Now, now I know what it feels like to receive a massive bad beat in a high stakes tournament. That was the hand. That was the hand you thought you would double up with. You're like, yeah, I'll probably double up with this one. I got a queen and a seven. What can go wrong? Hey, boys. Cash tournament for my net worth. <laughs> By cash, I mean bag. I was like, <laughs> Chris, like, wait a second. What roll you play? Oh, we throw those in too? I have no idea. Oh, uh, yeah. You're going to have to get a second bag. It's interesting because in Triton, when you go deep, it's just going to be all like the best players in the world uh, surrounding you. So it's, uh, I looked over at Phil. There was actually one time when I wasn't even in the hand, Phil was staring someone down. And I was looking at Phil, and then he just darts over at me like this, and we catch your eyes, and I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> it wasn't even in the hand. <laughs> I feel great. I just bagged 40K. We're going to come back tomorrow, and we're going to have like 18 people off the money. Uh, we're going to have like 15 bigs. But I've seen miracles happen before. You ever see that movie Miracle? That's going to be me tomorrow. USA, USA. Kidding, Canada. But yeah, we feel good. Tomorrow's gonna be a great day. I feel a massive spinning coming, and I'm probably still gonna bink it.
Yeah, so it was cool to see guys like, you know, my buddy Chitty and, 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 and Philly Eye. Uh, like me, I saw those boys in like the Hard Rock 250 or something a couple, a couple years ago. So it's good to see those boys again. Just kidding, I've never played with Chip Wick or Phil Ivey or any of these guys. Sitting down next to these legends, um, it's intimidating. Um, these guys definitely mean business when they're at the table playing these high rollers. Um, so for a guy who doesn't take himself too seriously, he likes to sit down and have a good time, um, it was definitely a different kind of atmosphere. Um, but a lot of these top pros, like I feel like they're super dialed in because they don't have many people come to the table and try to have some table talk or try to have some banter or try to have a little bit of fun with whatever they were doing. Um, and I think a couple of them, like Vogel saying, I was so surprised, but had some great table banter. <laughs> Me and him had some great laughs. Chibwick a couple times as well, we were talking about how we can get like an automated, like a robotic Vogel saying hood, like buttons on so it like comes up, but like talking about how jacked his tries must be from like doing this all day, every day. <laughs> you don't really see that when these guys are just on TV you know, deep in the tank in these edited shows. So it was cool to see a different side of some of these pros. Hardy activating from the cutoff with the ace eight. One of the best spots he'll find. Fortunately for him, he is ahead slightly. Of course, Boyka all too happy to get it in there with the king queen. Has party well covered and we'll see if the party's gonna be over. Three to two favorite. Let's see three. Not a bad three. Ace high still in front, open ended as well. Turn is clean, and you saw a nervous look on Party's face, by the way. Now, a few less nerves perhaps. Gotta fade the king or queen, and he's done it. Heart rate over 140 for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I love it though, you know, Thanks. with so many poker players, you feel like they're a little dead inside, but it's nice to see people come out here and really be willing to wear their emotions on their sleeve. I mean, that. Now I'm not even in pots and my heart's going nuts. <laughs> I'm not even in. I have nothing to wear, nothing to lose. I'm still going to serve. So we're excited for Jittery. Well, I mean, when you get the We're short. That's wrong. And as you can see, we have some very notable players, which means the competition is intense. Was sixth in chips overall coming into this one. Brewer's second shortest stack in the room here on the Stone Money Bubble. Oh yeah. <laughs> An eightless river means a cashless journey in event number three for Chris Brewer. Time to check in on John Party's heart rate. You lose in 21st place, Chris Brewer. Congratulations everyone, you're all in the money. It's weird having your, your biggest score ever and still losing money. <laughs> At what heart rate do we seek a medic? Jonathan Party, ace queen, in a raise and flat situation. This no time. hesitation. Relatively modest investment, Devorah Steams, for a shot at 70K in EV, courtesy of a Jonathan Party bounty. We need high cards here. <laughs> in ace queen versus threes. 46% equity, <laughs> and that number slips. It's not a great start. <laughs> The deuce, also such an unfortunate card to be tethered to the two jacks. Ace ball, ace ball dealer. Third jack on the turn, six outs or the ace, and the board does end up filling up, but the pocket threes will play. Good game, bro. Ace queen versus threes. Uh, to get us up back around uh, a million, I uh, would've been right back in the mix, but we did not find a way to get there. Um, this has been one of the best experiences of my entire fucking life. Uh, I had an absolute blast, played against some of the best in the world, uh, held our own, got lucky, uh, and had fun. So, no complaints, life's good, baby. <laughs> it's so funny, my biggest, my biggest score ever, lost 2K. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I will keep this for the rest of my entire life. I just cashed 
a Triton event. And I know I'm making jokes about like, oh, like 40K cash for 38. I'm fucking thrilled. There's something different about this experience that I'll just, I'll never forget. I'll never forget. I'll replay it in my brain forever to my deathbed. To be honest, I'm not sure if this experience would have meant as much for me if I didn't have Drew um, alongside with me. So to bring, you know, your best friend and a guy who you've been through so much with and who has been there from the very day one of your poker journey, following you from from nothing to here, uh, it was pretty special. I wanted him to have this moment as bad as I wanted to have this moment. Seeing John succeed is it's almost like, I don't wanna say like my son doing something, but you know, I've always been rooting for him, pushing him in however I can and like watching him grow type of sense. We've shared the low moment and now we've been super lucky and fortunate enough to share the high moment together as well and I think that's quite special. I think the year that Chris Moneymaker won the WSOP main event was the year so many people got into poker because they were so inspired by that story of him running through the field versus all the pros back then and just straight winning it. That story inspired a lot and even though my story is obviously not the WSOP main event, but the fact that things like these can happen is definitely part of the beauty of poker. For the community, it's a lot more than just a surface level, oh, look at these ACR pros going over and doing these cool things. The meshes that I get where it's like, wow, like, is there a way that I can get into this? Well, yeah, there is ACR runs, satellites, you know what I mean? Or, or wow, like, if you worked your ass off and you got this opportunity, I'm gonna work my ass off and hopefully someday get the same kind of opportunity, so. I think that's what's exciting about people like me coming in where we're not at the same skill level as these guys, but hey, we're playing poker, anything can happen. It takes a lot of hard work, study, and luck in order to have these big scores and big moments. But, you know, I think these stories just go to show that just, you know, hey, it can happen, right? Lives can be changed.